All right, so one of the questions I get asked often is, will you go back to South Africa? I think uh, somebody made a comment on the channel also again, and it's like, if the elections goes right and you have a different, will you go back to South Africa? And uh, will you ever go back to South Africa? And the answer to that is actually very simple. Yes, I will go back to South Africa. Um, based on two things, really, there's two things that they need to sort out. And if that problem can be solved, I would gladly go back to South Africa. South Africa is an amazing place. It is really a beautiful country. Um, I mean, the bush felt, you've got, I mean, we've got the great forests and everything there, but you can go to the Drakensberg or the low felt. We've also got forests and stuff there. South Africa is an amazing place. <coughs> love the weather, love the people. But there's two things that we can't, that just, you know, I can't stay there until that gets sorted. And the first one is obviously the crime. We've spoken about that so many times. Unless there's proper rule of law, there's no point in going, I would never go back to South Africa. I think that is probably the number one thing. It's like even when we went there in August last year, we are on edge all the time. We were stressed. It's like we are worried about getting robbed or getting hijacked or getting mugged or, you know, it's just, it's not a nice feeling. People here don't understand it. People in Canada and people around the world in the Western world, they do not understand um, being on edge the whole time. Um, and I know, I know there's plenty of people in South Africa that says, yeah, that's just you, you don't, it, it's not, um, it's not like that. The reality is, for me it is, and I think if you actually leave South Africa for long enough, where you live in a place where you don't have that stress, then you start realizing how much of it there was. Um, we obviously have a reason. I mean, it's like once you had some oak with a gun in your face and hitting you over the head with a gun and, and, and you know, you, you're in a situation where you're fearing for your life with hooligans, youngsters that are like, have absolutely zero, zero, zero care for human life. They, they don't give a shit about you or your life. Once you're in that situation, it's kind of hard to, to move, to get over it. It's kind of hard to not think about that, you know. Once you've been hijacked or robbed or been in a situation like that, it's, it burns into your brain. I mean, it's not uh, something that you just go, ah, it happened once or it happened twice. It's, it's not going to happen again. So, you know. Um, all right. Anyway, so the first one is the crime. Definitely the crime. It's, if they can sort out the crime and make it a place where rule of law counts, man, that would definitely make South Africa a brilliant destination. I would love to go back to South Africa. And then the second thing is obviously is, is opportunities. I think that's the second biggest thing, really is opportunities. The thing is, in South Africa, there's lots of opportunities for people that want to work and do stuff, but there's not... No, I, I put it wrong. In South Africa at the moment, there's not a lot of opportunity for people. There are too many people and there's not a lot happening. Yes, you can do business and there's opportunities, especially if you some of the newly minted black diamonds and you can get onto government contracts and stuff on that. You know, there's, there are opportunities for certain portions of the population, but for the biggest part of the population, there's not a lot of opportunities. And, um, you know, for our kids, the thing is, I was reading yesterday, today actually, I was saying this morning that in the US, there are more jobs available than there are people looking for work. Um, in Canada, there's lots of jobs available. I know it's going a little bit tougher, don't get me wrong. Um, a friend of mine applying for work, he was saying that he applied for one job and he, he got, he saw the job opening pretty quickly and he went to apply and there was 800 applications already for that one job. So, um, but back in South Africa, it's actually significantly worse. There's a lot of people in South Africa and not enough work. And obviously, you've got the quota systems, which, I mean, 
whatever the reason may be, if it's a good thing, I'm not going to debate that. The reality is that um, you do have the BEE quotas and you can only employ so many people of each race. And the reality is that as a, a white person, you do have, a, um, you know, it is a little bit harder and it is what it is. So opportunities are less in that sense. And then, of course, also thing is, you know, although I think that the other thing, the thing that's changing lately is that in the old days, I mean, if you lived in Cupertino or San Francisco when they built Apple computers or in Washington when or in Seattle when, um, you know, when Bill Gates launched uh, that uh, Microsoft you were close to where stuff was happening and people got involved and you had these big tech companies. Whereas when you are out there in South Africa, you're far away from everything. You weren't in the thick of things. But I think that's changing lately with uh, this whole global and online thing. I was reading the other day that Amazon Cloud was actually mainly developed in Cape Town, South Africa through um, teams from there. I did not know that. Um, so that was very interesting. Sorry, folks, my camera is trying to be slow here. So let's see if it comes right when I go around this corner. Anyway, yeah. So I suppose that kind of opportunity, you know, with the, in the digital age, there's more and more offshoring, there's more and more stuff happening. So there is opportunity out there that, you know, maybe normally wasn't there. I actually think there's a lot of people that are doing offshore work in South Africa. It is still hard though. I mean, I was dealing with another company that do LinkedIn, um, they do LinkedIn management and they were I introduced them, introduced them to some companies out here in Vancouver and places like that, but it's it's a nine hour time difference. So for them, it's all, you know, it's not easy to work for somebody this, time, this side of the world. But um, anyway, back to what we were talking about. Would I ever move back to South Africa? Um, on two conditions, I would gladly move back to South Africa. The first one is get the crime sorted out, make it a country with laws and, and where people can feel safe. And number two, um, if there are more opportunities, if there's more work available and less quotas and less like corruption, I guess. Um, those are the two things. Well, I suppose a lot of it just spills over. I mean, it's easy to say sort out the crime, but you can't sort out the crime unless you sort out the corruption. You can't sort out the crime unless you um, sort you know can shut the borders down so that you don't have so many um, migrants coming in from the rest of Africa you know undocumented people a lot of the crimes are committed by undocumented people because people up in Africa they know they hear that in South Africa there's lots of opportunity they go down there they go through the border they get into South Africa they're undocumented they find that there's not enough work and what do they do they turn to crime to survive which is fully understandable, I suppose. Doesn't make it right, though. So it's an interesting one. Um, so, yeah, you've got to sort out the borders. You've got to sort out the corruption, because if the corruption is sorted out, then hopefully people will have a better chance of survival and maybe there will be less crime. It's a bit of a mess that needs to be sorted out. But South Africans are resilient, they work hard, they, they're great people. Most South Africans are super friendly, super helpful, super nice, um, super open and warm people. And then there's some that aren't. Huh. Yeah, but I don't see it happening, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't see it getting to the point where um, there's actually crime gets sorted out to the extent that I will trust moving back to South Africa or that we would feel comfortable moving back to South Africa. I mean, the climate is amazing. The 
cost of living, especially if you can earn dollars internationally, is amazing. I mean, stuff is so cheap. My mom oftentimes, um, when we speak to her, she's like, oh, lamb chops are so expensive. It's now like 160 rand a kilo for lamb chops. And I'm like, oh my God, if I can buy lamb chops for $12 a, a kilo, I would freaking eat lamb chops all day long. You know, so yeah, stuff's a, a lot cheaper there and there's a lot, uh, cost of living is great. Some people are great. Uh, South Africa doesn't have to stand back when it comes to malls, services, um, uh, yeah, wow. Like how you live, I mean, South Africa is just in a different vibe altogether. If it wasn't for the crime and the opportunities, it would be without a doubt a better place. Uh, huh. Yeah, anyway, so we'll see how it all pans out, but I can't, can't see us going back to South Africa. Although if I went back to South Africa now, I could buy myself a really nice house with our savings and I could um, live like a king. Standard of living is significantly better in South Africa. I was speaking to some people at the um, West Vancouver um, Cultural Festival, also South Africans. I mean, people that had their own businesses and they had workers and, you know, um, they had a good life, but also touched by crime and decided to move and to give their kids a better opportunity also to work and, and be closer to the tech epicenter of the world. And yeah, you live, you move out of your nice fancy house in Joburg and now you live in a, um, in the basement of a house in Vancouver and you pay like five times more rent than you paid for your house in Joburg. It's interesting. Anyway, folks, that's it. Will I move back to South Africa? I don't have a problem with that. As long, I love South Africa. I think it's an amazing place. I love South Africans. I think most of them are amazing people. Um, but yeah, I'm not going back there unless they can figure out how to make it safe and unless there's better opportunities there. And unfortunately to do that, a lot of other stuff needs to be done. Somebody was telling me at the West Vancouver Cultural Festival that there's last year 400 and something thousand South Africans left. Now, can you imagine the impact that has on the South African economy? Because who leaves? I mean, let me tell you one thing, it's not cheap to leave. It's not cheap to move to Canada. So yes, you move a lot of sh a crap load of cash leaves with those people. And then who are the people that has the cash, cash flow and the ability and the, the who can leave? Those are skilled people because it's skilled immigration. Those are people that used to pay taxes. Those are people that used to add to the economy of South Africa and now they're gone. They go and do their thing in different countries. I mean, people, South Africans are moving to Georgia, all over the world. So it's an, actually a nasty catch 22, honestly. The people that are leaving are generally the people that the country could afford the least to, lead, to lose. That's what it is though. All right, folks, I'm going to sign off. Let me focus on the driving here. So I kind of keep on looking at you, which is not ideal while I'm on the highway, right? Um, you almost have an absolutely beautiful day. Cheers.